whether you have a love of ale, balty, brown sauce, chocolate or custard, Birmingham has done it all. In our last episode of our series where we explore the different Birmingham Museum sites, we're looking at food. We'll start by going to a house that's over 400 years old, and if that wasn't enough, it's one of the oldest properties to become a civic museum. We're going to Aston Hall. When the hall was built, Aston was rural. This was the biggest building for miles, for many, many miles, and it was a, a, an area dedicated to farming and to Sir Thomas Holt, who had the hall built. He had it built because he became a baronet, he became a nobleman, and he wanted a big house to show off his importance, his stature, his wealth. When the hall became a museum, part of the close grounds became what is now Aston Park. Aston Hall lower grounds, which used to be the fish ponds, is now the Aston Villa ground. So we are right in the heart of Aston, but you wouldn't know it. Today I'm dressed as one of the, the more senior servants of Sir Thomas Holt. Um, this is what his cook might have looked like in the 1630s when he first moved in. Uh, mostly wool and linen. My hose and my breeches are wool. My doublet, my shirt, they're both linen. The singlet I'm wearing over the top, just to keep me warm, is a very fine russet wool. And then my head, of course, covered in, in a linen day cap, so that in the presence of my betters, I can always doff my cap. We actually know quite a bit about the, the foods and the menus. A big house like this would benefit from an educated cook or an educated mistress who could read, not necessarily write. There's cookbooks from the period. This is a reproduction of one that was pr printed in 1618. And it, it takes you through making all kinds of basic dishes. But one thing that features very, very heavily is meat. If you were a wealthy man, like Sir Thomas, like his, his neighbours, you'd be eating meat, you'd be eating very good bread. And all of your fruits and your, your uh, vegetables, you'd only be eating that if it was cooked in with things. A uh, fine venison pasty might have some plums or uh, some, some uh, berries, but you wouldn't sit there eating apples, not, not unless it was preserved in brandy. Poor people eat vegetables. The poorest would probably rarely, if ever, be able to eat meat. And you don't want to present yourself as somebody that keeps a poor table. The room we're in is the great dining room. It's not the room that Sir Thomas would have eaten most of his meals. That would mostly be downstairs in the great hall with his entire household. But if he had people he really wanted to impress, he'd have brought them up here to the great dining room. In October 1642, he had his most important visitor, King Charles I. He stopped here on his way to fight the first major field battle of the English Civil War, the Battle of Edge Hill, and he would have been fed the best food, the most impressive spread that Sir Thomas could have uh, provided for him. We do have a, a very fine display of the sorts of food that the King might have expected, including fabulous meat pies, venison, uh, a boar's head, and the, uh, the most spectacular centrepiece, which is a peacock pie. So now let's come back closer to the present day to find out some more about some famous Brummy food brands. And that means going back to Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. Birmingham was of course the birthplace of the Balti and that really showed a, a real revolution in, in dining culture. Uh, all of a sudden instead of fine dining uh, for the upper and middle classes, working classes were regularly going out to um, curry houses and having a, a meal cooked for them uh, and prepared and delivered to the table. So that's really the start of, of what we see in, in, in the dining culture today, uh, not only around, uh, around the world but especially here in Birmingham as well. We've got in our collection um, a booth from the Koh i Noor which was one of the, the, the earliest curry restaurants in the city and it's still a fixture uh, today on Bristol Road. Yeah, this is a curry booth from uh, the Koh i Noor restaurant uh, in Birmingham, one of the early city restaurants. It's one booth of what was many booths in, in the restaurant that we were able to uh, remove when they were in the middle of a refurb. So I was tasked with uh, going in and, and retrieving it from, from site. A team of about four or five went down to do a recce, so a few days before when we kind of got the, uh, the okay to go in and see whether there was any, anything of worth in there. Uh, but then it was over to me and I think there's two others to actually try and extract this as best we could. So we wanted to get it in as big a components as possible. So I think it's in, it came in two halves in the end, uh, including the carpet which we cut out and even the wallpaper. So to peel back the wallpaper in places and you know, some of the dado rails and 
Yeah, so it's quite it's quite a challenge this one. This was typical of, of what you would see in the, in the restaurant. You know, the, the two rows of, of booths. And there was, so this this sort of the main area of the restaurant was packed full of booths, and they were about, uh, the tro almost a trolley's width apart. So that yeah, that trolley was purpose built just to sort of run up and down the middle. It's almost like a air steward's trolley up and down the, the centre of a of a plane. That you know that that second arch was this, was another booth, and then there would be another one after that. So we've just got one of sort of maybe 12 booths that were in the, in the restaurant. Every uh, household will have an item from Birmingham, uh, a brand in their kitchen, um, whether it's Cadbury's, uh, Bird's Custard, uh, HP Sauce uh, being the obvious uh, example right here. In terms of the 19th century, uh, Britain being the, uh, the, the most industrialised country, and then, of course, right in the middle of it, you've got Birmingham with its, its easy access to, to coal, metal, clay, uh, canal transport, railways, uh, and later on the, uh, the road networks, all coming into a, a, a focal point. And so commercial food products really uh, started here in Birmingham. And well, aside from uh, the HP sign, we've got um, uh, several pieces from Cadbury's. We've got Bird's Custard instant custard being the, the great gift uh, to the world that Birmingham produced. Uh, we've got an Ansel's beer bottle uh, which has the extra link that um, the squirrel that was used on the on the label is uh, from the crest of the Holt family who owned Aston Hall. So now we come full circle back to Aston Hall and to the end of this episode. Throughout this series I've really enjoyed learning how much our history shapes us as Brummies and how lucky we are to have windows into the past like the Birmingham Museum sites. enjoyed watching Birmingham through the ages and the series has inspired you to go out and explore the Birmingham Museum sites yourself when you can. Please don't forget to get in touch and tell us your favourite moments of the series and also tell us what's your favourite Brummie brand. Stay safe.